Uh, my name is Joshua Four. I'm the author of Moonwalking with Einstein, The Art and Science of Remembering Everything. The book is about the uh, history of memory, the science of memory, and it's about a, well, it's about the strange story of how I ended up becoming the United States memory champion. From the front of the room, the chief arbiter, a former Marine drill sergeant, shouted, go. My judge clicked her stopwatch and I began peeling through the pack as fast as I could, flicking three cards at a time off the top of the deck and into my right hand. I was storing the images in the memory palace I knew better than any other, the house in Washington, D.C. that I lived in since I was four years old. Just inside, the Incredible Hulk rode on a stationary bike while a pair of oversized loopy earrings weighed down his earlobes. Three of clubs, seven of diamonds, jack of spades. And just behind him, a midget jockey in a sombrero parachuted from an airplane with an umbrella. Seven of spades, eight of diamonds, four of clubs. Jerry Seinfeld sprawled out, bleeding on the hood of a Lamborghini in the hallway. Five of hearts, ace of diamonds, jack of hearts. And at the foot of my parents' bedroom door, myself, moonwalking with Einstein. Four of spades, king of hearts, three of diamonds. The judge, who was sitting opposite me, flashed me the time on her stopwatch. One minute and 40 seconds. Not only was that faster than anything I'd ever done in practice, but I also immediately recognized that it would shatter the old United States record of one minute and 55 seconds. I closed my eyes, put my head down on the table, whispered an expletive to myself, and took a second to dwell on the fact that I had possibly just done something, however geeky, however trivial, better than it had ever been done by anyone in the entire United States of America. A few years back, uh, I had gone on a really short little magazine writing assignment to toss off a 1200 word piece about this kind of wacky contest called the US Memory Championship. And when I went to this contest and saw these people performing these utterly impossible feats of memory, it made me realize that I didn't know the first thing about how my own memory worked. And I'm the kind of person who likes to know how stuff works. And it sort of struck me as odd that I, they were, these, these people who were competing in this contest told me that they were using these ancient techniques that had been invented 2,500 years ago, and I had never heard of them before. And this just sort of set me on this journey to try and understand my memory, how it works, and how it sometimes doesn't work. Um, and also to try to see if I might be able to train my own memory in the way that these memory competitors, they called themselves mental athletes, which at the time I thought was funny and now is, <laughs> um, has a little bit of a different meaning. But <clears throat> that's what sort of got this whole process started. One of the, the old cliches about journalism is find one story and sell it three times, right? So I got really interested in this world of memory competitions and the ways in which it was a window into how memory works and how the mind works. And so I said, all right, you know, I got to I got to learn more about this. And I convinced, you know, one magazine to send me to, you know, to Germany to 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 meet some memory scientists and cover a memory contest and then get another magazine to send me to do another story. And what I did was basically write a whole bunch of stories about memory and, and while I was personally trying to um, unravel this whole storyline for myself and figure out how they all fit together. I was totally coming at this as a journalist, right? I just wanted to understand how this stuff works, right? Whether it was really possible that one could improve their memory to the degree that these people were telling me they had improved their memories and that they were telling me that the ancients had improved their memories. And I frankly was skeptical. And I realized I wanted to write something about this sport of competitive memorizing. The problem is, a memory contest is a pathologically boring event, right? It's truly like a bunch of people sitting around taking their A-levels or their SATs, whatever. Um, and there's no drama. There's no storyline. It's hard to construct a narrative out of one of these contests. And I realized if I wanted to tell this story in a way that was going to be compelling and that was going to allow me to get into the bigger questions that I were, what were really motivating me, like how does memory work, I needed to put myself in these people's shoes and try what they were doing myself. This is a tremendous honor for me to be nominated for the Royal Society Winton Prize and to be included uh, with such a distinguished uh, and esteemed group of authors. So thank you very much for this incredible honor.